The Center for Simplified Strategic Planning is excited to present the Succession Planning webinar presented by Dana Baldwin. Dana brings more than 30 years of experience to his seminar participants. He has held senior management positions including chairman, CEO, and COO in mid-sized companies. He is familiar with all functional areas, having also served in sales, sales management, production, and engineering. Dana has a Master's of Management from Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. His critical thinking skills have been well developed and honed with more than 15 years experience leading companies through the simplified strategic planning process. Dana, we look forward to your comments on succession planning. Thank you, Denise, and welcome, everyone. Uh, we're glad you're attending today's webinar on succession planning. Succession planning is one key element in your overall strategic planning process and is necessary in order to assure you have the talent available to populate your future. One process note, if you think of any questions you would like us to address, please enter them in the questions box at the bottom of the GoToWebinar box and we'll respond at the end of the program. Let me start by telling a story about my own family's company. We did not really do an effective job of succession planning. Family members were judged both by their abilities and their family relationships. The result was not anywhere nearly as positive as it could have been with the advantage of 2020 hindsight. We usually ended up with the right person in the right job, but without the background and experience that would have made the transition much cleaner. This is one reason why I'm so interested in succession planning. What is succession planning? Succession planning is the process by which a company perpetuates itself by assuring their candidates who are well qualified and well experienced so they may assume higher roles in the company as people retire, leave for other opportunities, or move further up in the organization. Is succession planning only for top executives? No, not anymore. Key positions in many different areas of the company likely should have succession plans. Succession planning has developed into a strong process which is aimed at developing internal talent at multiple levels throughout the company with the goals of retention of key talent and having promotion paths for those key talents. Results for many companies include better performance, raised morale, and improved profitability. Why do companies do succession planning? Companies have realized that in the past, They've done succession planning only for senior executives in case of retirement or career changes. The result was that it was likely that upcoming contributors at lower levels felt not appreciated, even though their contributions to the effectiveness of the company could have been key to the success of the company. When we look at the ages of our workforce today, over 60 million people, about 40% of the workforce, will be ready to retire by about 2020. This will result in a huge need for people who have been prepared to step into the places of these retirees at multiple levels of their organizations, not just at the executive level. What percentage of your employees will be retiring in the next two years, five years, 10 years? Do you have a process to identify people with the potential to move into higher level positions? How do we assess whether we're making progress in educating selected individuals for their future roles in the company? Can we identify those candidates who may have to step into higher roles if an opening occurs? Do we have plans established in case a senior person leaves the company or do we have gaps in our personnel resources which should be addressed? Succession planning helps human resources departments manage employees' career paths. They encourage assessing the knowledge, experience, and potential of employees so that those with talent can be recognized early on. Once an employee has been targeted for possible inclusion in succession planning, a career path may be established which will give the employee exposure to appropriate jobs, education, and experiences, which should help prepare the employee for future promotions, increases in experiences, 
and opportunities to grow into more responsible positions. One significant outcome of a successful program of succession planning is the likely retention of key talents while they learn and grow within the planned paths for their journey upward in the company. One other consideration is that if a company does not have a pool of talent within the organization due to good people seeking opportunities elsewhere because they see no upward career path, then the company will have to go outside to obtain the requisite talent to meet its needs for qualified replacements of key positions. This can be very expensive, with considerable risk based on the possibility that any given person from the outside may not work out, may not fit the culture of the company, or may not be a good ma match for the needs of the position they're hired to fulfill. Long term, a succession plan for key talents will save both time and money for the company. Time is saved in that when an opening appears, there should be one or more people who have been groomed to take the next step into that opening. These people don't need time to become, from, become familiar with the culture of the company, the people within the company, and the processes they'll be expected to utilize to do their new jobs. Costs will be saved by not having to go outside for new talent. The company will not have to pay the headhunter fees, which can range from, range from 20 to 40 percent plus expenses when hire, hiring someone from the outside. In addition, by bringing someone up from within the company, openings are created at lower levels for others to move into, resulting in improved morale, better results due to the level of familiarity with the company, staff, and processes, and further opportunities for those who are key talents at lower levels within the company. Let me give you a good example of why companies should do a good job of planning for succession in key positions. CDW recently faced a unique challenge. The company had a large majority of ready candidates for promotion. However, the internal succession and talent management program lacked the necessary process to encourage growth and establish strong leadership development for future coworkers. The solution. To avoid the financial and practical burden of full-blown talent searches, CDW implemented an internal succession management program using performance and talent management systems. CDW developed individual employee talent profiles with the competencies, certifications, mobility, interests, career history, and goals. From there, the company built a detailed organizational depth chart that identified potential successors for every key position in, the, in that company. Finally, the recent emergency emergence of ongoing talent reviews for employees at all of levels of a company has helped reshape corporate thinking. Much like performance reviews, this process gives companies a qualitative snapshot of the talent pool and readiness of individual employees to step up to leadership roles. And since today's workforce is more transient than ever, it becomes criti critical to assess employees from both the talent and performance perspective and openly provide career development opportunities to ensure the right people stay. What are the effective uh, what are the elements of succession planning? Effective succession planning should help your company, uh, one, assure continuity within the company, develop key talent in time to be prepared to meet future needs, Retain key talent because they will be able to see a path to the future with more responsibility and authority. Assure an ongoing supply of people who are ready to take the next step upward in the company when the need arises. The first step in an effective succession plan is to actually define the processes we will follow to determine who is qualified to be included in a succession plan, what knowledge and skills they have, and where there are gaps. Assessment. Assessment will determine the current capabilities of an employee, the foundation on which a career path will be built. Assessment should also include the determination of the company's future needs, so we have sufficient resources in place to fulfill those needs as they occur. Assessment will determine what is needed to continue individual personal development. By assessing the capabilities and the apparent gaps in knowledge and experience, a rational career path can be established for each key talent, 
which should lead the people involved to be developing the knowledge, skills, and relationships needed for career advancement. It will build a cadre of people who are becoming ready to move into positions of more responsibility. The outcome of the assessment phase should be a document which lists the capabilities, skills, and knowledge of each individual with what they've garnered to this point in time. It also should list areas in which gaps are perceived, so the person may be given experience in where areas where there are gaps or provided education to close the gaps. This really should become an element of career path development for individuals. These documents should be regularly updated and revised as needed to track the progress, the progress of candidates, as well as to modify the future action steps needed to continue the development of each person. No two people learn at the same rate, and as such, flexibility must be built into the overall process in order to keep on track with each person. The assessment of future needs and the assessment of an employee's current knowledge, experience, and capabilities should be integrated with the results of your strategic planning process. The reason for this is to assure an ongoing supply of capable, experienced, involved people who should be able to step into higher roles so they can continue to pursue the vision of the strategic plan in the future. We'll talk more about this later. Once the process of identifying key employees and future needs is accomplished, the company should have a good picture of future needs as well as the potential for various individuals to have the abilities and experience necessary to fulfill higher level positions. The next step is to establish individualized programs for identified talent to give them the education and experiences appropriate to their current capabilities and to their anticipated future roles in the company. Finally, you should monitor the progress each person is making along their career path. Some people might not do well enough to continue in the original direction established for them. A plan should be determined as to what do, to do with them. Are there other paths they should take? Are they topped out in their progression? Should they continue with the company? Hard decisions, but decisions have to be made in order, in the best interests of the company and the individual. It is no favor to a person to allow him or her to continue with the company if there's not a good fit. What are the benefits of succession planning? Simply put, there are a number of distinct advantages to a company to do succession, effective succession planning. Replacement for senior management at the appropriate time. Replacement for key positions throughout the company when needed. Retention of key people. Retention of knowledge within the company. Improved morale. Improved processes and procedures. All this should lead to better profitability. What are the pitfalls of succession planning? While the benefits of succession planning are many, there can be some pitfalls to consider. By identifying one person as the successor to a higher level position, other talented people may decide there is nowhere for them to move up, so they will leave. The solution to this is to not actually select the one person who will take the particular job when the current uh, inhabitant leaves or is promoted. should wait until the need actually arises and then pick the best of the pool that's available. By establishing objective criteria for upward movement in a company, but not actually naming a successor until the need really occurs, the company can retain qualified people. Even if one person is not named for a particular position, the fact that they've been prepared for upward movement may well qualify them for similar positions within the company, thus helping with retaining knowledge within the company, as well as retention of a well-qualified person who may be able may be able to take other responsible positions within the company. By identifying one person as a successor to a key position, the company is locked in to a particular path. And if the nominee doesn't pan out later on, the company may end up without a qualified individual to step in when the opening occurs. When the company is privately held by a family group, are there additional factors which should be taken into consideration? The short answer is yes. Good friends of mine here in Grand Rapids, Michigan were fourth and fifth generation of their family in a very successful business. I interviewed one of the fourth generation some years ago about how they went about doing succession planning for their company. 
These are the rules that they had literally written out many years ago, which governed their approach to the involvement of the next generation in the family business. Their first rule was that anyone who wanted to come into the business had to work for another company for a minimum of five years. The second rule was that if a family member wanted to enter the business, he or she had to make a firm commitment by age 35. After then, there would be no opening for the individual. Their third rule was that once a family member came into the business, if he or she decided to leave, there would be no return available. That decision was final. One of the most difficult things to do in a closely held family company is to separate the personal lives of family members from their professional lives. The first principle I would strongly suggest is keep the two lives separate. Set up objective criteria for any family members who come with the company. Whenever possible, use non-family members to lead, train, and criticize the progress of the younger family members. Monitor the progress of the younger family members objectively, not being harder nor easier on them than would be appropriate for a non-family member. Pay for the job, not the family relationship. Establish the career path or paths which are possible for the individual and set out what is what is expected for each one. The knowledge required, the skills required, the experience to be gained, mentoring, where possible have this done by a non-family member, and the performance levels and attitudes expected. Do regular performance reviews. When changes are needed, make them in a professional manner as would be done for any non-family employee. This is a key one. Don't bring them into the inner circle until they have earned it. Don't include them in any decision-making process where the family member's superior is not involved and responsible. In conclusion, effective succession planning is a key part of strategic planning for an organization. Having a stable of qualified, trained, well-educated, and experienced people who can step into a higher level job can be a key to long-term success as an organization. It is not a simple nor a quick fix, but one which needs to be well designed and implemented with great forethought so the process accomplishes what it is aimed at accomplishing. Having the ability to transition from one person to the next and a well-planned, well-executed process which is positive for both individuals involved as well as for the organization itself. One of the elements of succession planning is to decide what are the key attributes the successor needs to have. It is not enough to have the attributes of the current person. What are the attributes that will be needed in the future? By having a clear strategy, you can see what the future leaders of the company will be, need to be good at. And these attributes are, can be added to the succession plans of various leaders. The questions to ask yourself are, one, do we have a good strategic plan that we live by? Two, is succession planning a part of that plan? Three, does succession planning have its own action plans to enable the company to keep the best and brightest and to have them ready to step in when needed? If you do not have a good strategic plan, you will not know what these new attributes should be. You may end up developing people who have the attributes of good leaders of the 20th century, not for the 21st century. Now, many of you may ask, how does one determine what skills may be needed in the future? This is what go back to what we spoke about earlier. You need an excellent strategic plan that gives you a roadmap of where the company is going and what skills will be needed to get you there. For example, in the 20th century, your operations people may have been managing people in the U.S. For the 21st century, you may need the skills of someone who can manage in a global operations environment. Marketing managers need to be adept at social media. Design engineers may need to be adept at 3D printing. A good strategic plan will help you better define the skills needed in the future. So as a special bonus for those who attended this webinar, we'd like to offer a special price to attend our widely acclaimed seminar, Simplified Strategic Planning. The special price is $995. The usual price is regularly $1,895. This is your seminar link to take advantage of the offer. To register, please go to that link. 
If you're listening to an archived version of this presentation, please call Elizabeth Tidd, our seminar coordinator, at 734-995-3465. Mention you've just listened to the Succession Planning webinar, and she will give you a special webinar rate for the seminar. We can't teach strategic planning in a one-hour session like this, but if you would like to take your company, this, somebody, this seminar will be well worthwhile to, for the time and money spent attending. Thank you all for attending this webinar. At this time, I'd like to try to answer any questions which you may have about succession planning, the process, and the results. Denise, do we have any questions? Yes, Dana, thank you. You've given us some great food for thought. And understanding that link between succession planning and strategic planning um, is a good one, because sometimes I think people don't look to the future when they define their candidates. Um, once again, for all who are participating, we have a couple questions, but if you haven't asked your question, just go down to the question box, type it in, and I will submit the question to Dana. So, Dana, how deep in a company should succession planning be used? Good question. While every company is different, it usually depends on the availability and cost to replace a key person. If there are easily available replacements, then the need to have that position included in succession planning is lower than if the position is more difficult to fill and if it requires any specialized knowledge. The answer is that you should look at your company structure and determine where your current and future needs will be and how readily you can fill that slot should a key person leave. This should tell you how to proceed. Good. Um, here's another question. Why don't companies go to headhunters to find a good candidate when an opening occurs? Well, often the, the inhibiting factor can be cost. Typically, 20 to 40 percent or more of the position's compensation is the cost to have a headhunter find a qualified candidate. That can be pretty darn expensive. Another element of cost is the lost time that other people in the company have to spend interviewing candidates, then reviewing the results with a hiring team and human resources. This can be time consuming and can take time away from their normal jobs. Finally, familiarity with the company, the culture and processes that must be learned and absorbed are a key to someone's success. And this can take time and not doing it well can have serious consequences. Excellent. And then we've got one final question, although I'd like to, um, you know, the question is still open if you, the, if you would like to submit a question in the question box. But here's the last one we have at this time. Uh, what happens when you have two well-qualified candidates for a key position and you select one? Well, if there's nowhere else for the other person to go, you might lose them. If you set up the process, the second person will perceive that he or she is valued and still has a future path within the company and will support the process. Good communication here is a key. And the fact that you have brought somebody along over a period of time, letting them know that they're important to the company and the company's ongoing success, often softens the blow when one of two people has to be selected for a particular uh, position. You want to keep the knowledge and the relationships in of in house and, and uh, good communication is the way that this gets accomplished most of the time. Yeah, you do run the risk every once in a while losing somebody. It happens. But a good plan yeah. will 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 often short circuit that. Excellent, Dana. I think uh, that's all the questions we have for today. Once again, I'd like the attendees to, you're welcome uh, to read articles on succession planning. Dana has several of those. Uh, you will receive some follow-up information, which will give you more data on succession planning. And of course, if you find your strategic plan isn't really delineating um, a good view of what the future will be, we invite you to attend our spring seminar series. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for listening to this webinar.